In the previous video, we program or started to program our gameplay logic. So here we have our first guess and second guess. We are checking how many times we have guessed. We are getting the indexes of our guesses. We are assigning the names of our images and we are assigning those images to our buttons. Now we need to create an eye enumerator, which is a coroutine and a coroutine, as we know, is a delayed behavior. If you don't know that, go and make sure you check out my C sharp tutorials for unity. And here I'm going to well call our start coroutine. So here start coroutine passing our coroutine. And here inside of this coroutine, what we are going to do, we are going to say yield return new wait for seconds. And let's say we wait one second. And here we are going to check if our first guess puzzle is equal to our second guess puzzle that means that we guess correctly and here what i'm going to do is i'm going to say check if the game is is finished so i also need to create this function so void check if the game is finished and here we are simply going to well count correct guesses plus plus this is going to increment correct guesses by one and here we are going to check if our count correct guesses is equal to game guesses and this is going to be equal to or here we have to say debug.log so let me just type it right so debug.log game finished and here we are also going to say it took you so game finished it took you plus count guesses plus many so many guesses to finish the game so we are also going to count the guesses of our user so here we have our count correct guesses and our count guesses we are going to perform here so each time we guess we are going to count our guesses and our game guesses are going to be equal to and we are going to add them here below our start function and they are going to be equal to our game puzzles so game puzzles dot count divided by two so divided by two we know that our game puzzles dot count are going to hold well two buttons excuse me eight puzzle pieces excuse me and we are going to divide it by two and that's how many of these well game guesses do we have which we will well make clear in a little bit but here we are checking if our first guess puzzle is equal to our second guess puzzle then we are performing check if the game is finished and here we are checking if we actually finished the game what we also need to do here is here we are going to call our yield return once more and we want to disable the buttons if we have well guessed correctly so here we are going to say our bt ends and here i'm going to say first guess index dot interactable is equal to false because we don't want our button to be touchable again and here i'm going to say second guess index we are also going to set them or their alpha channel to not be visible so here I'm going to say buttons and instead of interactable, I'm going to say image dot sprite or excuse me, image dot color is equal to new color. And I'm only going to pass zeros for RGB, red, green and blue and alpha, because we don't want our buttons to be visible if we have guessed correctly. So practically, that's what we are doing here. And now we are checking if our game is finished else if our puzzle pieces don't match we want to set our background color or excuse me background image back to our button so that we can guess again so here instead of color we are going to say sprite is equal to bg image and also here i'm simply going to copy and paste this one right here and this is going to be equal to our background image and also here i'm going to yield return once more outside of these well if else statements and we need to reset our first and second guess so here we need to say first guess is equal to second guess is equal to false this is equivalent to saying first guess is equal to false and typing here second guess is equal to false 
so we can set this on one line again what we are doing here is if we guess correctly then we don't want our buttons to be touchable again so we cannot touch our buttons again for that we are typing interactable is equal to false and for both of these so the first index and the second index next we don't want to see our buttons in the scene anymore for that we are well getting those buttons using their indexes using their images and color and setting the color to zero 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 which well actually this is important right here the alpha channel so we need to set the alpha channel to zero and they are not going to be visible inside of our game anymore we can also copy this right here and we can wait half a second before we well set our sprite images back and i've noticed here that i did not end this well debug.log so end it here with this bracket or otherwise we are going to have problems we can now run the game and we have a playable game so if i touch one of these puzzle pieces they are going to return back if they don't match one problem that we have here is that all of our puzzle pieces are like this and we can well finish the game quickly what we need to do is we need to write one more function to randomize our puzzles so here i'm going to create a void shuffle function which is going to take a list of sprites so sprites as an argument and i'm simply going to name it list now inside of this function we are going to shuffle our list for that we need to write a for loop so here we need to say for int i is equal to zero as long as i is less than list dot count increment i and here first we need to create a sprite which is going to be a temporary variable we are going to store the element that's at index i from the list we are going to store it in our temporary variable next we need to create a random index variable which is equal to random range and we are going to create it from zero using also list that count so not clear it will count this is going to return a number between 0 and this number right here, not including this number. So between 0 and the number less than this one. And now we are simply going to use list.i is equal to, so it's equal to list, and the element that's at random index, so random index, and our list and the element that's at random index is equal to our temporary variable so equal to our temp practically what we are doing here and I will explain this in short terms we are getting a reference to this element which is at list i index so using the element i or well the index i here we are creating a random index between zero and list dot count or excuse me between i and list dot count so not zero it needs to be between i and list dot count so make sure you type here i instead of zero so this is going to create a random index between this number and this number not including this number right here and now we are simply assigning the element that's at random index to our list.i and we are assigning our temporary variable back to this index right here which is going to shuffle our elements and we also need to call this here in our start function so here call shuffle and pass our game puzzles in order to randomize our game so now we are able to play our game and we have a fully playable game and if i try to guess these two we see that our puzzle pieces are not here right below each other anymore so we need to try and guess a little bit more in order to find the correct pieces of our puzzles and this is what i said so let me just find our puzzle pieces so here and the last one i think was here so no i was mistaken so these two and now the last two and we see that our game finished it took you 10 guesses 10 many guesses i write, wrote this wrong so you can correct this so it took us 10 guesses to finish our puzzle game and we saw that how can we use and check for our puzzle pieces so here we are counting the guesses here we are counting for the correct guesses here we are counting as i said for the correct guesses we have our game guesses which i said is equal to game puzzles dot count divided by two because if we go here we have our game puzzles which is this one right here so we have eight but as i said each button represents only well 
two, well, each button represents two images. So we have one guess. And now we have one correct guess, as I said. This is the second correct guess. And what we also have here, let me just guess right. So this is the third correct guess. And lastly, this is the fourth correct guess. So we need to use game puzzles divided by two in order to, well, create this, well, game puzzle. So let me just find it where it was. So here, we need to use game puzzles that count in order to know how many game guesses we have in the game. So I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and you have a fully functional game here. If you liked what you saw here in this tutorial, maybe you will also like this game right here, which I created using techniques similar. But here we also have other puzzle pieces that we can select. We have our levels and we can select the transport puzzles. We can also go back here and select the candy puzzle. So we have level three and let's say I play level one here and I try to beat it. So we also have animations. We see here that our buttons are turning instead of simply showing the image of our well, puzzle pieces. So let me just finish the game and I cannot find these puzzles. And we also play a nice, well, fade out animation as we see here. And now when I finish the game, we are going to see one nice panel displaying how many stars we earned for this particular level. We can go back and also play another animation. So this is a nice game that you might also like to create. If you are wondering where can you find this tutorial, this is actually a course of mine here on Udemy.com and we see here that we have estimated timeline because I uploaded a preview video. And here we have Mastering 2D Games in Unity, Build 6 Fully Featured Games, which I will link in the description below with a discount code because it costs $99, but it has 27 hours of content which I think is, well, $99 for 27 hours of content is not that much, especially if you are going to create six fully featured games. And you can go here and check out the course. You can preview the games that we are going to create. So we have six games with full features from scratch, creating menus, creating characters, creating, well, movement for the characters, select, uh, character select screen, level select screen, lock and unlock levels. We are going to encrypt our data. We are going to implement video, interstitial ads, publish on Google Play, and much, much more awaits you here inside of this course. So if you are interested, and that way you can also support me to create more tutorials here on YouTube and create more awesome courses for which I'm going to give you huge and huge discounts. Check out the link below. See if you like the course. Maybe you will buy it. Maybe you will not buy it. But anyway, if you like the video, share, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next tutorial.